Hi friends, uh, really quick before we start the video, with all of the attention going back to Stephanie Meyer and the Twilight series, I just want to let everyone know I will have a link down below in my description box where you can opt to donate money to the Chloe tribe. This is a tribe that Jacob is supposed to be a part of. Um, and I will give a link down below for a website that shows some of the um, issues that they are having and a place for you to donate if you are able, whether that is the cost of the book or more. Um, but just something to keep in mind, especially if we are going to give money to Stephanie Murray this week, um, to also support the tribe that she basically profited off of. So yep, I will have that link down below and all of the videos for Twilight Week will have that link down below if you are interested. Okay, let's actually start the video now. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Becky and uh, if you are new here, I am currently doing a full series reread um, of the Twilight books due to the Midnight Sun release. Uh, yesterday's video was my Twilight review. I will have that linked up in the cards if you are interested, um, but let's go ahead and dive into all of my thoughts on New Moon, uh, starting with moments after the book started. Hey friends, okay, so not that far into New Moon. But we're, like, we're halfway through the first chapter, and I just, <laughs> Bella just made this comment about how she hates that, like, you know, Edward's rich and will pay for stuff for her, and, like, how she never grew up, like, that wealthy, and, like, how, like, he doesn't understand, like, why it makes her uncomfortable, and y'all, when I just got, like, some Fifty Shades flashbacks, like, the more I'm rereading Twilight, the more I'm noticing the fanfic influences in Fifty Shades. <laughs> Is that a pro? Is that a con? Is that an unfortunate fact? I don't know. But um, yeah, this is what happens. I'm on my way to turn off my light and get ready for bed. But yeah, I just like had that. I'm like, oh my god. Okay, this is where we're gonna. This is where we're at. Oh boy. All right. Okay, okay. I will uh catch up with y'all in the morning with more new moon updates. Bye. Good morning, friends. Okay, so I started listening to New Moon yesterday, and um, I'm already a little grumpy. Um, so the entire first four chapters, so this is the birthday party, Edward leaving, um, the four months passing, and then Bella um, inviting just the movie is just irks me so much. Um, first of all, communication please like this entire problem could have been solved with proper communication um second pretend i would so decide to leave um why did charlie wait four months before even suggesting mental health help for bella but also like the way that he suggests it is so toxic it's like you're leaving i'm sending you back to your mom no this is my home now you can't wait for a boy no, maybe you should see someone, a shrink, like, <clears throat> like, okay, like, I know we haven't always been as accepting of people that need uh, mental health care, and we haven't exactly been fantastic about it up until kind of recently, but, like, even back for, what, 07, whenever this came out, it still feels a bit, mm, mm. Yeah, I'm just uh, grumpy. <laughs> uh, I do. This is so frustrating. Um, especially when you have Jess, who's like mad, like, oh, you're talking to me now. It's like, girlfriend, do you not recognize depression? I mean, probably not, but still, like, I don't know. Like, this entire book is so frustrating when it deals around mental health, especially since suicide is an underlying theme of this book and it just handles depression and mental health so poorly it's just it's already so aggravating um i mean and also kind of like the complaint with twilight like at this point you don't buy bella edwards relationship like you find out that it's been six months since the events of book one so they've been together at this point at most six seven months from this point and, like, okay, I'm not going to act like high school breakups aren't, like, dramatic, but, like, four months supers on a high school breakup is, like, you know, please get some help because clearly there's another underlying issue. 
um like a month two months and it's just like and you know all of this it's just to build drama and tension and introduce the second leg of the love triangle that's not gonna go anywhere because the entire time Jacob's just her emotional support person and it's angry and it's frustrating ah um so that's what Twilight reread is going um I will be finishing New Moon at work today um <clears throat> so I'll probably also start clips. I tried to like record my final review and thoughts before starting the next book. So I'll try to like come out on like a break or something and do that. Or I guess I'll just wait till I get home and start clips when I get home. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm just already aggravated. I know it just goes downhill from here. Like Twilight has its issues, but like at least kind of still holds up as like a low three, high two. But, like, I know the rest of the series just goes downhill and I'm not excited. I mean, I'm intrigued to see what my thoughts are like, but I'm just... All right, so um, I'll update y'all when I read a bit more. Hi, friends. Okay, so um, I'm on my first break of the day at work, and um, there is construction across the street. I really hope that the microphone is um, helping... Tune it out. I'm gonna try to hold it here-ish. I do have some notes, um, so I'm going to try to go back and forth between those. I'm gonna try to hold the microphone here to like drown out the um the sound, but we will see. But wow. Okay, so I am on chapter seven now. I'm almost on chapter eight. Uh, basically, Jacob just got the motorcycles running, and they're about to do their first ride on them and Bella just saw um that cliff jumping is a thing um and I oh I'm having I'm having thoughts on this one so um first uh when so I wrote down a few notes that just like have stuck out so far um I don't remember if I said this in my update from earlier today, but I think the fact that Edward, like, removed himself completely from Bella's life was just stupid. Like, I get the notion of, like, a clean break making it easier, but it's, like, my dude, <laughs> at least give her some memories to, like, hang on to, like, the CD or something. Like, oh my god, I don't know. The whole way that the breakup was handled just pisses me off. Um... And, uh, when Bella and Jacob was hanging out, I just know so many things that have not aged well. Like, when Bella said, you need a Y chromosome to enjoy, like, the car talk, it's like, girlfriend. Yeah, no, dudes tend to enjoy cars, but plenty of girls enjoy cars, too. Like, you can, like, not be into a thing and not have it be like, oh, it's because I don't have a Y chromosome. I don't know. That just might be, uh, um... <laughs> That just might be the stereotype hater in me coming on out, but that one angered me. Um, hard yikes. The first time they introduce uh, Leah, uh, they talk about how she was, quote, beautiful in an exotic way, and that one just made me have all types of yikes. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Let's, you can just say she's beautiful. She doesn't be beautiful in an exotic way. Um, God damn, that, that just helps with the um, sexualization of uh, natives. So that's a yikes for me. And then also, like, Bella's just a judgy bitch. Like, I forgot what a judgy bitch Bella was. Like, um, she's at the table with everybody. Um after she came out with Jacob and she kind of like is talking a bit more she talks about how like she hasn't really noticed that like Lauren got a haircut and she's like no she has her hair cut like a pixie cut it's shaved in the back like a boy's I wonder what happened did she sell it did she get gum in it was she almost scalped by people that hate her I'm like Bella Bella you bitch what the fuck um <laughs> so yeah that was pleasant to read about um I also like uh, so Bella talks about how she starts to feel alive around Jacob again. And obviously, like, if this book handled mental health, is the fact that, like, you know, she's coming out of her depressive stupor. She has a good support system. But Bella is treating Jacob like an emotional support human, which, like, they have their time in their place. But she talks about how she's trading one addiction for another. And I feel like that's where this whole 
story and the whole love triangle just like fails for me is the fact that Jacob and Bella's genuine friendship is so precious and so, so pure. Like, yeah, it's clear Jacob kind of is a thing for her, but it's implying this world that everyone with a penis has a thing for Bella if they're within the correct age range. So, like, that's not surprising. But it's like, I just really wish, I really wish that they were just able to stay friends. Um, and I even, like, back in the day, me had the same thoughts. Like, I love their friendship. Everything changes when it turns into a wannabe romance and nothing for the better happens like why can't they just be friends and I feel like books like New Moon further perpetuate the stereotype that guys and girls can't be just friends um because you have Mike who notices Bella kind of coming out of her shell invites her out after being very obviously turned down numerous times in the first book and, like, you know, tries to shoot his shot, and when Bella's like, well, just as friends, and it's on page written, well, he wasn't as enthusiastic, but he agreed, and then you have, like, this fantastic friendship with, Ed, with um, Jacob and Bella that you know is about to get ruined, and it's like, why can't you just have them be friends? Like, how strong would the book have been if Bella had to give up a really strong friendship with Jacob? with Edward without like the romantic undertone like I feel like the story could have just been so much stronger but no <laughs> but no um also I totally forgot that Bella worked at Mike's sporting goods store which I'm like oh that's where the Anna hardware store from the fanfic came on it like it's just really fun like finding all the fanfic parallels I was saying that last night but and that's kind of like the main thing it's like getting me out of like the things that are frustrating me but I'm just like, this book had so many potentials, but it fell into so many unnecessary tropes and traps that make it really frustrating. Because, like, we have the underdeveloped relationship, and then that went away. And then we're getting a really solid friendship gang developed that is going to get ruined with romance. And it's just, oh, it's so aggravating. Um, I'm going to keep reading, obviously. Because I like torturing myself, I guess. It's just so angry knowing how good the story could have been. Like, plot-wise, not, like, content-wise. Uh, and knowing it's about to get ruined. Um, I will say this. I do like the way that Stephanie Meyer does have a little bit of foreshadowing. Like, she introduced the Volturi in book one. They were referencing at the beginning of this book. And, I mean knowing how new moon ends like that's kind of cool that they're like you no know, not coming out of nowhere but i mean i feel like i have to give this book like a couple of praises um i'm gonna keep listening i'll probably update you guys on my last break of the day because i uh talk with people and actually kind of socialize on my lunch break so i'll probably talk with you guys a little bit later by then i should have the book finished or mostly finished i'm going between listening and uh catching up on reading vlogs but yeah all right i will um touch base with everybody in a little bit um and i'll let y'all know how how downhill we go from here because we know we're only going downhill from here all right i'll talk with y'all later well hello friends um okay well i finished new moon and all i can say was that this reread was frustrating because so many things didn't need to happen and yet they kept happening. The theme of this book is, oh my god, communication. Ah, it's so frustrating. Um, where to begin, I guess? Um, I think I last updated you when Bella was first meeting, like, did I tell, where did I last update you guys? I don't remember. I don't remember what I last said. Um, See, I know that, like, describing the appearances of people in this book, especially of the other tribe members, was not good. Um, between, like, the use of, like, almond eyes and exotically beautiful, like, that was just uncomfortable and not great. Um, I think also describing them as, like, 
no, like, the way they were eating was, like, kind of, like, savage. Like, mm, that wasn't great. Um, like, in any context, that's not great, but especially in this context. Um, I, okay, this is, like, the least of the issues in this book, and I get that. But, like, Bella kept calling her Edward hallucinations delusions. They were hallucinations. They were not delusions. They are those are two very different things. They should not be used synonymously. And I was getting frustrated that they were. <laughs> so when Alice turns up after Bella decides to be a dumbass and go cliff driving, um going cliff jumping and cliff diving does not make you a dumbass. The way Bella did it made her a dumbass. I just want to clear that up real fast. Um the entire second half of the book just gets really frustrating because Yes, Edward did try to call, double check, and Jacob answered the phone, didn't let Bella talk. Yes, I get that. But Edward could have clarified from the funeral to whose funeral. Like, one follow-up question is all it would have took. Where is he at the funeral? I'm sorry, do you mind if I clarify whose funeral? Done. Didn't have to go there. Um, okay, real talk though. The amount that suicide was referenced in this book and not only normalized it, but made it, oh, I don't want to misword this, but I guess glamorize is like the most appropriate term. It doesn't feel correct, but we'll go with that one. Between like the reference of Romeo and Juliet at the beginning to, um, to everything else, like I just, I mean, I think that the use of suicide being as flippant as it was in conjunction with how poorly mental health was used up to this point just really did not sit well at all. I can definitely see how problematic that is. That is something that like, um, I don't know, like how like everyone kind of brushed off. I don't think Edward planned on living much longer than you or planned on not living you that much or like that was already pretty flippant and then like his reaction the second like he doesn't get confirmation but like he thinks that something might have happened that's the reaction and this is poised as romantic like peak romance and that just oh that it bothers me a lot um, not only is that message extremely harmful, but it completely minimizes and like it glorifies, romanticizes that and makes it seem like the ultimate act of love is that when it's not, there's so many things in this book that should have been done differently and should have been addressed differently, but that really rubbed me the wrong way. Also, there was a part where Bella talked about how she's shattered, she's broken, and because of that, she would never be good enough for Jacob. And that really hurt because it signifies that people that have gone through trauma, whatever that looks like, whether that is a nasty breakup or an abusive relationship or anything else, are unworthy of love. And that's just such a damaging message. And I know I should not be reading into Twilight as deeply as I am I know that but I feel like with how monumental and instrumental the series is and the fact that it is aimed at teens I was a teenager when I read it and I was I was on the phone with my mom yesterday and we were kind of talking about this and she talked about and I was telling her I'm like yeah my views on this are a little different she's like well honey you were just in I in love with the idea of love and that that got me thinking the fact that there's so many teens that read this and think that this is a blueprint of a good relationship. And I mean, fortunately, we, that kind of ebb, ebbs and flows and most people don't really feel like that. At least I don't think so. But there's still this, this notion that Edward and Bella have a healthy, loving relationship. And that's just not the case. And I feel like New Moon really exemplified that. I also really hate Jacob being forced to be a love interest. Jacob definitely has this notion of, like, I'll keep trying until you love me. I won't give up, which is such 
an incel move. I'm not saying that Jacob's like an incel, like that's not what I'm saying. But like that's a move that we see too many guys take if if someone said I'm, I'm generalizing here. I know this happens across all genders. I'm just generalizing for the sake of this conversation. That you see many instances of one person saying no and another party basically wearing them down. And that's basically what Jacob said that he'll try to do in this book. And there's even a whole chapter called Paris when Bella, um, you know, says that if she can't have Romeo, maybe she'll just settle for Paris, referring to Jacob. But makes it clear shortly before that. She loves Jacob. At first, she wanted. At first, she would describe the love as brotherly, and I just wanted to cling to him. And then, basically, said that Jacob is the only thing keeping her from breaking down again. But it will never be that of Edward. And I hate that that had to turn to romantic love. I really wish Meyer took the opportunity to show how a good friendship or um, how strong friendships could be. And guess what? Even if there was that romantic undertone, Jacob could have accepted that Bella said no and still had a, a healthy friendship with her. But instead, we have this love triangle ultimatum before them. And yeah, of course, like the wolf vampire thing adds to that. But I feel like it's just like this extra layer in there that just makes it so frustrating. Um, yikes. Um, I also feel like Bella never really, like, telling Edward how much the whole, like, aging thing bugs her and, like, either plays off as a joke or reacts to it but doesn't explain why she's reacting to it as much. It just, like, sucks. I mean, like, again, there's much bigger issues in these books, but these are definitely the ones that, like, jumped out to me that got me to, like, <laughs> have to, like, pause the book and just like step away from him for a second I'm like oh my gosh um we're about to get to things that are going to get a fuck ton worse and I know that um I think what's the most frustrating is that there's a skeleton of a really interesting story in here Edward could have had to leave for another reason they could have used the whole Victoria plot line and made that be the reason that Edward left so they didn't have to break up um, or Edward broke up with her because, you know, he was hoping that if he broke up with her, Victoria wouldn't do, wouldn't track him. Like, there was some reason in there to get him to leave. They could have had Jacob still be there as a support system for her and just kept to, to be friends. Um, like, there's just proper mental health use could be in there when, you know, the fact that everyone in Bella's life recognized she was going through a severe depression and instead we get, I'm sending you away, I'm not going to be your friend because you're a shitty friend to me, or emotional support people. Those are the responses and those are just, and I mean, I know like we can definitely point to like product of the time, product of the time, but like it could have been handled differently and we didn't have to write in, she's going to put herself in harm's way to hallucinate to see this guy because that's the only way she can hold on and said there could have been other coping mechanisms to use and it's just so aggravating that that was the message Meyer decided to spread instead of a healthier one and again I know part of it's product of the time but that just really really bugged me so much um and again I I know there's way bigger issues in the book the rampant racism the pedophilia which we'll get into later on rereading twilight was nostalgic fun with a side of red flags new moon was 500 pages of yikes so i guess we'll see how eclipse continues our downward spiral um if you guys are enjoying these Twilight reviews, um, please drop a like down below and hit subscribe. I am doing book two beta, so I am uploading every single day in the month of August. This week we are doing a Twilight inspired week, so every single day this week there will be some sort of Twilight inspired video. Um, there will be reviews of the books, including Midnight Sun, and um, after this week we will be going back to regularly scheduled content. So. If Twilight is not your jam, um, please consider checking back next week. We will be going back to not Twilight related stuff. But um, 
and that's our, that is everything I have for this video so thank you all so very much for watching and I will see you all with a new video um specifically our eclipse review coming tomorrow